In this short video, I'll look at the history of the graphic user interface. This is a summary of one of my class lectures with added video clips from around the web as reference. So sit back and enjoy the history of the graphic user interface. To begin with, let's familiarize ourselves with the two main types of computer user interfaces, the command line interface and the graphic user interface. Firstly, there's the command line interface. This is a way of interacting with a computer where the user types commands to the program as lines of text or command lines. Obviously, the main input device is a keyboard. This example you can see in the video is actually from a Raspberry Pi running a version of Linux. Notice how the user types in the instructions or command line arguments into the terminal window, which includes the command word, such as ls to list the contents of a directory, and flags that configure how the command works. All the commands are typed at the shell prompt, in this case where you see the dollar sign, but sometimes it may look like a hash sign if you're logged in as a super user. Learning the commands and how they work is a barrier to some people and is generally not seen as very user friendly. In addition, humans are primarily visual mammals. That means we like to live in a world with visual clues that act and react to our interactions. For the general population, all these lines of commands are just too much like hard work. This leaves the command line interface in the realm of the nerds, geeks and IT professionals. Now let's look at the graphic user interface, or GUI, which is sometimes pronounced GUI for short. This is a type of interface that allows users to interact with electronic devices through graphical icons and visual indicators. Rather than a keyboard, the main input devices are things like a mouse, trackpad, touchscreen or graphics tablet. This type of input is more intuitive and there's graphical feedback, more like the real world. So let's start way back in the 1960s when computers were the size of rooms. This is the IBM Sage computer where the input of information is through punch cards and the output through a circular cathode ray tube. A special light gun can be used to interact with the blip on the screen. All other functions are via real flip switches and buttons that link to the electronics under the control panel. In 1962 at MIT, the first computer game was programmed on the PDP-1, and the game was Space War. With limited memory and punch card programming, this was not a desktop computer. Custom input switches were hacked together to form the first game controller input device. The first ever electronic digital programmable computer was built in 1943, but in 1965 the Programmer 101 was the first commercial desktop personal computer. As you can see it's more like a programmable electronic calculator. It's got keyboard input, command line interface, punch cards and an integrated printer for output. So although it's a desktop machine, there's no real graphic user interface, just printouts or commands and the results of the programs that are run. In 1973, the first operational Alto computer was built by Xerox. This features a three button mouse, a bitmap display, the use of graphical windows, the ethernet network, and the Alto is the first system to pull together all the elements of the modern graphical user interface. In this video, we can see the monochrome display being used with games or a simple painting program, something of a first. In 1984, Apple introduces the Macintosh. This is the start of the now recognizable all-in-one monitor computer unit. The interface features desktop icons, multiple windows, the finder as a file manager window, and the trash icon for deleting files. Then in 1985, Microsoft releases the first version of Windows, 1.01 featuring 8-bit color, meaning that the maximum number of colors that can be displayed at any one time is 256. 
Now windows cannot be overlapped but are instead tiled and windows are not allowed to cover an area at the bottom of the screen that is reserved for iconized programs which is now called the taskbar which is the green part on the video. So now is a good time to have a quick look at the acronym WIMP or WIMP which stands for Windows, Icons, Menus, Pointer, a term popular for interface design in the 1980s. A window runs a self-contained program isolated from other programs that run at the same time in other windows. An icon acts as a shortcut to an action the computer performs, for example execute a program or a task. A menu is a text or icon based selection system that selects and executes programs or tasks and the pointer is an on-screen symbol that represents the movement of a physical device like a mouse that the user controls to select icons. So back to the history and in 1987 Apple introduces the Apple Macintosh 2. This is the first color Macintosh with a 640 by 480 pixel screen resolution and an interface that follows the now recognizable WIMP paradigm. The 1980s were an interesting time with many different computer manufacturers and various operating systems, each with their own take on the graphic user interface. These PCs include Acorn, Next, Commodore, Tandy and IBM. As you can see, they all adopted similar graphical user interfaces with windows, menu bars, buttons and icons. 1995 and Windows 95 came out with features such as desktop icons, the taskbar, the Windows start button, overlapping windows and now the famous web browser Internet Explorer. This was followed three years later with the updated Windows 98. By this time the whole world was switching on to personal computers and Microsoft Office was king of productivity software. New features in Windows 98 included 3D rendering, for example the 3D screensaver. In 1999 Apple hit back with the Mac OS 9, the last time the Apple logo was rainbow coloured. And then in 2000 began the run of OS 10. This brought us the new Apple Aqua GUI gel effect buttons, subtle edge shadows, the expanding dock icons and animated effects as you interacted with the user interface. Soon after in 2001 Windows XP was released which brought the Windows interface up to date with Mac OS X. For years the main input to computers was the keyboard, mouse and game controllers but then in 2006 something new came along the Wii Games Console and the Wii Remote Controller. It was a wireless handheld pointing device which detected movement in three dimensions and started a new wave of computer-human interaction. 2007 saw the introduction of the Windows Vista interface, significant for the aeroglass design with the glass-like transparent windows and a 3D hardware rendered interface. At this point let's remind ourselves what our phones were like back in the early 2000s. This is the popular Nokia 3310, a phone typical of the day with monochrome display and hardware buttons. Now let's look at the 2007 iPhone, the first generation iPhone. Touchscreen navigation, multi-touch gestures, suddenly the phone has lost the hardware buttons is brought into the world of graphic user interface design. This is the place in history where WIMP, remember it stands for Windows, Icon, Menus and Pointers, suddenly loses the pointers as the pointing device is now your finger. Clever animations have to be employed to replace the mouse pointer for screen interactions with a touch screen. And so to 2010 and the iPad. Now this is not the first tablet computer by a long shot but it is the first commercial success for tablet computing. Just like the iPhone has touchscreen input and can flip between portrait and landscape mode, it has skeuomorphic design for icons and apps. So what is skeuomorphic design? Well skeuomorphic design emulates the look and function of real life objects. Buttons look like real 3D buttons, 
knobs and sliders look like their real counterparts and even bookshelves look like real world equivalents. Following on from Windows 7 in 2009, Microsoft releases Windows 8 in 2012. This allows for touch star navigation on the graphic user interface on desktop systems and it has the metro style flat icons. It has mouse navigation using invisible non-discoverable actions at the corner of screens and this version actually removes the start menu from the desktop mode. The significance of Windows 8 is that we don't have skeuomorphic design. Suddenly flat style icons are trendy. Continuing the trend set by Windows 8 and the Windows Phone interface, in 2013 the iPhone iOS 7 changed from realistic skeuomorphic icons to flat minimalistic icons. And in 2015 we now have Windows 10 with an improved interface for desktop users, restoring the start menu rather than the start screen and with a separate tablet mode optimized for touch devices. So there we have a brief history of the graphic user interface across desktop computers and the migration onto tablets and phones. So what does the future look like? Wearable computers with tiny screens? Augmented reality and head-up displays? Digital glasses and contact lenses? Flexible screens and holograms? Remember, the GUI is just the interface between human and computer interactions and computers, tablets and phones are just modern day tools to help us build our world. Do we want to become a world of consumers lost in virtual reality? It's your choices on how you use technology that will impact the evolution of the GUI and how technology is integrated into our real world surroundings.